It is 649. This is your morning in eight minutes right now. The TSSAA is investigating a fight at the end of the playoff game between Lenore City and Fulton High School. Take a look. There were two and a half minutes left on the clock when the fight broke out. The Lenore City player went up and made a layup when she came down. That's when a fight started between her and a player from Fulton. Even some fans in the stands got involved and all four players were ejected and fans were asked to leave the gym as the game finished. Lenore City ended up winning the game. The TSSAA now looking into what started that fight. Right now, no criminal charges will be filed against the Knoxville police officers who arrested Lisa Edwards. She became unresponsive and died shortly after. Edwards was arrested for trespassing at Fort Sanders when hospital officials say they discharged her and she refused to leave. She was placed in the back of the KPD patrol car and became unresponsive on the way to jail. Edwards was rushed back to a hospital where she later died. The DA's office says video evidence shows the interaction between police and Edwards did not contribute to her death. The medical examiner's office said she died of a stroke and had other contributing factors to her death. A Halls man who once faced 30 years in prison for rape charges will now only serve supervised probation. Anthony Woods is pleading guilty to statutory rape and aggravated assault. Woods was originally found guilty two years ago and sentenced to 30 years in prison. He requested a new trial last year after a juror failed to disclose knowledge of Woods. The new trail, tr excuse me, trial was set to happen next month, but Woods agreed to a plea agreement of supervised probation for eight years. Well, the Knox County Sheriff's Department is issuing a warning concerning tracking devices and how they can be used against you. Officials say Apple AirTags are being used for all the wrong reasons. Just last month, a Knox County man was arrested for reportedly putting the small tracking device in his ex-girlfriend's car. The AirTags are very small and people can track your location by using their phone. If you're being tracked with an AirTag and you have an iPhone, you will get a notification telling you that an AirTag has been following you for too long. Well, check this out. Infrared technology helps save a boy from the woods in North Carolina. The Hiawassee Dam Fire Department called in help from Chattanooga to use drones to pick up heat sensors. They were able to find the boy curled up in the woods. Rescue crews on the ground got to the boy and took him to the hospital. Some sad news to report this morning. General Robert Nealon's last surviving child passed away last night. Bob Nealon Jr. played football for the Vols in the 1950s and was a swim captain. He went on to have a successful life in banking. He died last night at the age of 93. Well, right now, Knoxville Mayor India Kincannon will soon apply for a $25 million grant to help pay for part of the new proposed pedestrian bridge that will go over the Tennessee River. It would connect South Knoxville to UT's campus. Knoxville City Council approved the mayor's request last night. Now, some of the bridge will be paid for by UT. And happening today, President Joe Biden continues his visit in Poland as he talks with NATO allies. While in Russia... Russia's president said he's pulling Russia out of a major arms treaty. President Biden delivered a speech declaring the U.S.'s unwavering support for Ukraine while slamming Russia's war in Ukraine. Just hours earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed his supporters, blaming the West for the war while suspending Russia's last remaining nuclear arms reduction treaty with the U.S. A Georgia grand jury that investigated election interference by former President Donald Trump in 2020 is now recommending criminal charges. Most of the report is sealed, but portions released last week reveal some witnesses may have lied under oath. And former President Trump is expected to visit East Palestine, Ohio today following the toxic train derailment over two weeks ago. He's expected to deliver water and other supplies. The EPA is now ordering Norfolk Southern to pay for the cleanup and reimburse local businesses affected by the mess. Officials continue to assure people in the community that the air and water is safe. This comes as a new health clinic open Tuesday that will serve residents impacted by the derailment. Happening today, it marks the beginning of the 40 days of Lent observed by both Christians and Catholics leading up to Easter. It is Ash Wednesday. They often give up vices for a period and use the time to reflect and worship. Ash Wednesday is observed by having foreheads marked with ash in the shape of a cross by pastors. WVLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols. The third ranked Tennessee baseball team kicking off their home opener with a shutout win over Alabama A&M 10 to zip. The Vols and the Bulldogs square off again later this afternoon at 430. You can stream the game on the SEC Network Plus. On the hardwood, tough one. Tennessee dropping a close one last night to Texas A&M 68-63. 
Just three games left to go in the regular season with the Vols now returning to Knoxville for home games against South Carolina and Arkansas. The Vols take on the Gamecocks Saturday night at 6 o'clock on the SEC Network. Well, you could own a piece of history. Today is your final day to submit an offer to buy the historic airplane gas station on Clinton Highway. It was built in 1931 and closed in the 1960s. If you do buy it, you have to agree not to demolish the structure. The site is currently listed on the National Register for Historic Places. Well, you can now buy your daily, weekly, or annual Smoky Mountains parking pass online. Starting in March, passes will be required if you're looking to park in the area. Daily passes are $5, weekly is $15, and annual passes are $40. Officials say all passes need to be printed before you go to the park. Once you have it, you are asked to display it on your dashboard. You can get it up to six months before you plan to go to the park. We've got a link right now in the WVLT News app. It is 655 on this Wednesday. Let's check in with Whitney Turner and traffic. The left westbound lane of I-640 still blocked as crews are putting the final touches on that traffic shift for the westbound lanes between that junction of I-40 and Millertown Pike. This is all part of that rebelization work that they're doing. So now traffic moving in those outside lanes this morning. Use caution. You could expect to run into some delays there. Just a heads up, we're keeping an eye up on an incident in Sevier County on Boyd's Creek Highway at Davis Lane. The crews are asking that you avoid the area. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. 655. Well, we have a couple of light showers trying to move through. Remember that scattered rain tonight through tomorrow morning is really what's going to start to trigger all the changes that we see and feel. So when we take a close look, I was talking about that scattered batch coming onto the plateau and breaking up as it moves east. This is where you get these little isolated spikes up from a few hundredths to an isolated quarter, half an inch, a couple spots of a half an inch moving through parts of the valley. So that's why we don't all catch the rain. About a 40% coverage as it first moves onto the plateau with that about a half an inch in parts of Cumberland, Fentress, Morgan to Scott, up into Wayne to McCreary, and then breaks up as it moves east with a few hundredths to a quarter of an inch, and then those isolated half an inch spots of rain through tomorrow morning move it out. So right now what's moving in is a couple of sprinkles with these layers of clouds. Look at that. Knoxville just jumped to 63. So we're going to share these low 60s throughout the morning. Yeah, you're seeing those clouds. Looks kind of cool though with that sunrise coming up on the horizon, officially about 20 minutes out from sunrise, but we'll keep going to a warmer, windier day with a high of 78. Those gusts of 35 miles per hour. Then back to sunshine tomorrow after that scattered rain to only come down on temperature. So we'll check out that cold front coming up. All right, Heather, thanks. We're headed over to WBXX for two more hours of East Tennessee news, weather and traffic. Have a good day. Okay, boy.